Welcome to the next episode of Digital Supply Chain Institute Insights in Action. Today with me, I have a pleasure to uh, have a great conversation about a very interesting topic with our co-chair, Mike Rowe. Mike, welcome. Thanks for having me, Marco. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, Mike, because you've, you have been for so many years and you are even now on the forefront of new technologies. So exploring the e AI topics will be something I think interesting for everybody. And, it's, and it goes from like seven to 97 years, I think, of age uh, for everyone who is interested in technology. So there has been a lot of hype around uh, generative AI. Uh, since it has launched uh, Chat uh, GPT, and uh, what are your high-level thoughts on generative AI, and what should uh, comprise uh, co companies, basically, sorry, do about it? Well, first of all, the hype is certainly understood. It's incredible new capability that has been launched, uh, and particularly, it's been made accessible broadly to all consumers of technology through an interface like um, ChatGPT. It's a huge inflection point for AI and for computing in general that I think is going to change just about everything um, in our lives um, over time here. The thing, and it's all, it's all very exciting, it's all very new. It's a big change um, for all companies. The thing that I think doesn't change is how companies should respond to and with this new capability. Every company should now be looking at how they can use generative AI to improve their business operations, their efficiency, their productivity, but they should also be looking at generative AI to figure out how they can use it to provide services and products to their customers that they haven't been able to provide before. You know, as they do that, they should be asking themselves how could generative AI disrupt my business? Or how could I use Gen AI to provide disruption um, out in the marketplace? None of that approach is really all that new. That's the part that I don't think has changed because I believe that all companies have asked themselves those similar questions and have taken those similar approaches on every inflection point um, related to technology, including machine learning in the past. Thank you, Mike. And, and uh, I really, one thing which you mentioned resonates with me is that, you know, certain things are already known. So it's not that, you know, it's just uh, all new, new. And then uh, linking it now to where we are, you know, linking it to uh, the digital supply chain arena, you know, uh, AI, generative AI holds uh, a big promise for improving demand forecasting accuracy, uh, reducing inventory costs and, you know, enhancing supply chain efficiency. So can you share with us any uh, specific examples or use cases where generative AI algorithms has uh, demonstrated this impact? I, you know, I think it's really early. Um, so I completely agree that there's a ton of opportunity as it comes to demand forecasting, to efficiency, to productivity, to inventory, to supplier risk um, management as we go forward here. I haven't seen a lot of that come to fruition so far. Now, I, I realize things are changing very quickly, so that could become a very dated statement um, very quickly as well. You know, I have seen some reports of, you know, one or more of the ERP vendors who are adding capability into the ERP. You know, for example, looking at all the different news feeds on suppliers or your set of suppliers around the world being able to, to then take that information, identify risk and automatically generate communications out to the suppliers. I've seen reports like that, but I think there are bigger things to come. Um, but, but as we talk about that, let me focus in on supply chain planning um, as an example. You know, it's a space I've had a lot of experience in in the past and a couple of the big pain points on supply chain planning has been number one, trying to find the perfect planning system, which I would say does not exist even to today. On the second point was the adoption of the planner or the end user and the confidence that they gain in the system. I think generative AI could help out a lot on both of those pain points. It will allow much more vast amounts of data to be considered in the planning scenarios that combined with the generative AI capabilities should lead to a more accurate first draft of a plan. 
I think equally as important though, is that chat GPT like interface on the planning system to allow the planner to interact with the algorithm. So, so imagine a plan gets generated for the first time. And then the planner responds back to the system saying, I have late breaking news. We need to prioritize SKU number one, two, three, because we've got a huge order from a priority customer. Please take that into consideration and regenerate the plan. And then the planning system using Gen I capabilities not only produces a new cut of the plan with that priority in mind, but also explains to the planner, okay, I've, I've factored in that consideration, but now you need to see what the impacts are to the plan associated with that reprioritization. Here are the offsets or the drawbacks. And then allow the planner to iterate on that until they get to a plan that they're happy with, the best plan that they can move forward with. Thank you, Mike. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a great example. I think planning is uh, one of the biggest things which come for, came forward after especially COVID. And, you know, we see a lot of companies struggling with it even today. And you, you link it to the next big thing which we can touch on, and that's basically data. And how do you see then the, the, the role of collaboration and the data sharing as a crucial part of supply chain uh, management? And how can generative AI enable organizations to uh, harness collective intelligence, uh, leverage diverse databases, and foster collaboration among various stakeholders in order to optimize you know, the decision-making and uh, also have better outcomes for supply chain in general? There's certainly a lot of promise there. You know, the more data that we can share amongst companies within an industry and across industry, the more powerful the data models can be and the more powerful the generative AI can be. While there's promise there, there are some key dependencies that everyone should be focusing on while they're waiting for those priorities to uh, emerge or those capabilities um, to emerge. And, and that is that we need, to, we need to bring the data that we have in our supply chains out of silos within our company and get them onto a modern uh, cloud data platform. And we need to make sure that data is accurate as we're moving it to that cloud platform. And it needs to be multi-company within an industry or multi-industry, not just one uh, company's data. The good news for DSCI members is there are companies that can help with this today. I happen to be involved with one of them, a company by the name of Specrite, which is a leader in the specification data management platform space. They facilitate that and much more. Uh, so to the DSCI membership, uh, you know, if you haven't taken a look at Specrite, take a look at Specrite as an example of someone who can help you get your data in order so that then you can best be able to take advantage of these generative AI capabilities. Thank you very much, Mike. And again, it's always great to talk to you because you have practical insights, how things can be linked and where people can look in for solutions. And the companies who are taking the forefront in these areas and who are pioneers are really needed. So in order to try to wrap up the conversation, I think in a right way, we have to touch two more uh, aspects and you know, I'll try to put them in the next question. And that, that would be towards as generative AI continues to evolve, what are some challenges or considerations organizations should be aware uh, of when implementing and scaling these uh, technologies in their supply chain, right? How can they ensure, and this is a very crucial thing, I think, you know, uh, the ethical use of AI and, then, and maintaining the transparency and accountability in decision-making process? Well, to the first part, you know, I've already talked about the importance of the, the data, so I won't um, reiterate that. You know, let me move into a couple of different areas. Um, first, as you, as you start to go after the generative AI capabilities, um, you know, companies like Google, OpenAI, and others are making it easy if you have software engineers to do some of your own development of Gen AI um, capabilities. Um, but especially considering that the DSCI membership you don't have to do it all yourselves. Every software company out there, every technology company out there is currently working and figuring out how to use Gen AI to improve their service offerings, to improve their product and give you new services and products to help your company. So the advice would be stay close to those emerging technologies. 
have your eyes looking outward on what these companies are doing and who can best help you apply generative AI to improve your business. Now, to, the, to the second part of your question, I, I think it's a really good one. There, you know, generative AI, AI is going to provide often very accurate results for you to take advantage of. But there will be honest mistakes made as models are being developed. And there will be bad actors out there with bad intent who are utilizing generative AI to disrupt the models as well. I think a whole new space of technology is gonna emerge that is going to be there to detect as well as prevent these honest mistakes as well as the bad actors with their bad intent, just like the cybersecurity space. It could be an extension of the cybersecurity capabilities we have from those providers today. It could be new providers and a whole new industry that emerges for that detection and, and prevention. Um, but either way, I see it coming, and it's another thing for everyone to keep their eye on. So if I can try to sum up, there should be an excitement. There should be cautiousness, if I can put it that way, and then open-mindedness for learning and exploration. Very good summary, Marco. Mike, thank you very much for uh, being with us in DSEI Insights in Action. Uh, I look forward to doing another session with you, you know, let's say as time goes by and uh, looking into more case studies, I think that would be quite interesting because we all learn through the process and it is a journey as you have shared with us. So thank you once again for being with us, Mike. My pleasure, Marco. Thanks for having me. Look forward to the next episode of DSEI Insights in Action and uh, we look forward to continuing the journey with you. Thank you all and goodbye.